What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Blown Coverage. Joseph, as well as NAT is here. And guys, today we're going over the Monday Night Raw recap. But before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe below. Let us know what you guys think. NAT and I are kicking things off with Monday Night Raw. Pretty pretty okay raw. I mean, I wouldn't say it was the best raw, but Nathan, what did you think kicking us off? Uh, there was certain spots where it, can, it could have been better. I mean, it was honestly better than the Raw after Mania because that was just complete and utter garbage. Um, I mean, there was only like four wrestling matches for that one. But let's 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 take things off. Uh, we kick off the show with the Usos, Solo Sokoa, Paul Heyman, and everybody in the ring. They're approaching the ring. They get into the ring. Uh, the mic is given to none other than Paul Heyman who is about to cut a promo when he's interrupted by another little group called the Judgment Day, which is pretty interesting. I didn't think they were going to meet so quick, but what ends up happening is Paul Heyman tells the Judgment Day, basically, you scratch our back, we scratch your back. We'll take care of Bad Bunny and Rey Mysterio. If you guys can go ahead and take care of Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn and Matt Riddle. So it ends up basically setting up a match after they talk. And it's Solo Sokoa taking on none other than Rey Mysterio. And honestly, this, this match is actually pretty good. Rey Mysterio ends up hitting the 619 twice. He hits it twice. Uh, so the first time Solo ends up kicking out after he gets a splash. Then he ends up getting the 619 again. But as he goes for the 619, Rey Mysterio tries to do the frog splash and completely misses Solo Sokoa. And you know what happens after that. He, he has to pay tribute to Say Omaga. It. Samoa! Yep, hit Rey Mysterio with the Samoan spike. And But before that, that all happened, we got the Usos coming to interfere. And the LWO, LWO. Uh, interfered and stopped the Usos from jumping in. It didn't really nope. matter. And he got Samoan Spike. So, what else did you think of? Uh, what did you What did you think of the Judgment Day and like the Bloodline like working together for a second? I honestly thought it was gonna be them against each other, but what Paul Heyman said they want to do villain things. Yeah. <laughs> so I I don't know. I mean, it'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to actually see that faction. Put them in war yeah. games. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that, that actually I'm down cool. for a war games match. Um, three on three. Um, then we see uh, some oh footage God. backstage of Alpha Academy. Uh, Maxine Dupree talking to Adam Pierce earlier in the day. Chad Gable, um, he was making the case for keeping um, him and Otis together, you know, during the WWE draft that's coming up in a few weeks. Gonna be really exciting. A lot of changes um but yeah anyways you know pierce split says the belt. Gonna... what i said split the belt <laughs> i'm just we'll get just to saying, that we'll get to we'll that. see but, if that ever happens but really what i wanted to say was um adam pierce pretty much says he's going to take this uh all into consideration but he's got a lot of things going on tonight so then we see last week's damage control um their backstage segment you know there's a lot of tension with the group Maybe some people feel like they're not getting things that they deserve. Um, but, you know, EO Sky won a triple threat and she's earning a shot at Bianca Belair. So we'll get to that later. But what do we have next, Nathan? To kick, the, to kick that off, we ended up speaking about damage control. Another member uh, fought against or wrestled against uh, Bianca Belair today. And it was going to be Dakota Kai taking on Bianca Belair. Uh, Bianca Be Belair ends up defeating her with the KOD after Dakota Kai tries to hit a knee on the turnbuckle, misses the knee, and just gets KOD to right, right? Yeah. Push all the members of damage control right away. So, I, I mean, what do you, you think? I mean, I mean, it's kind of predictable. We, we knew yeah. who was going to win from the game. Yeah, it's like, you know, they put these matches on Monday Night Raw and they think like, you know, maybe young fans think there's a chance for the other competitor, but when you see these matches, you're like, you see him, you're like, all right, uh, this person's probably gonna win. Like today, we saw Seth Rollins and The Miz, right? And I was like, all right, we all, I think we all know who, who we think is gonna win going into it, right? 
But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was all right. It was a solid match. Um, Bianca Belair won. You know, hit the KOD, put it away. KOD, she then won. Then we got so. a little video. Of Pat. Then we ended up getting a video promo. Well, basically a video package about Bronson Reed and how yeah. Bobby Lashley and him didn't just went at it, and nobody there was no clear winner. So potentially sparking a feud there. Um, then we ended up getting a backstage segment with the Judgment Day, and they're they're talking about how the Dom's actually talking, yapping his mouth, saying that he's happy that his dad got beat and yada yada yada. And then here comes Mr. Heyman. Um, he says uh, he he asks um, fucking Finn Balor. He asks Finn yeah. Balor. Oh, so um, what would you guys think of what we did to Rey Mysterio? Finn Balor's like, eh. You guys did eh. And then Paul Heyman's like, what do you mean we did eh? He's like, well, you guys better do eh to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and Riddle. uh, So that way you don't owe your tribal chief anything. Yeah. And Rhea Ripley gets up, looks at at Paul and dismisses him, basically. He's like, you can go now. So there's She's a champ, bro. She's the one that... rivalry there. She's the one that runs that group, man. She's got the title belt. She's a bad woman, bro. I love Rhea Ripley. Um, but then we go uh, back into the ring, and out comes the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Whoa. And, you know, he Ain't says he knows, mind. he goes, <laughs> he, he pretty much says, I know exactly what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so... Cody Rhodes calls out Brock Lesnar to the ring, but uh, Adam Pierce interrupts him, says he appreciates what Cody's trying to do, but he can't let it happen tonight. So Pierce says everyone respects what Cody's trying to do, but you know, because of what Brock did to him a few weeks ago, he's not medically cleared to really compete right now. So yeah. um, Cody says, okay, and thank you, shared the respect. Cody then left, but he ended up stopping. Because what happened was Cody wanted some of Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar so, came out. But what happened, Nathan? So Brock Lesnar, so Cody's already leaving the ring. He gets a chair and then he comes back to the ring waiting for Brock Lesnar. Uh, then uh, then uh, Adam Pierce basically tells Cody, you know what? If you don't want to leave on your own free will, I'm going to have the help of these security guards. Yep. And here comes about like five or six security guards to the ring. To they surround Cody, and the second they surround him, Brock Lesnar's music hits. And you see Brock Lesnar with his he's wearing a, like a little black cowboy hat. Look like the Undertaker hat. Black. Came out like and a he, coat and a hat. <laughs> all I had to do is roll his eyes back and have the fog and everything. But other than that, um, then Cody starts getting riled up, and he ends up beating up all the security guards basically clears a path to Lesnar and I don't know what the hell happened but like like you know when you play Grand Theft Auto yeah to make something appear here when Cody you saw the clear path and just randomly 15 like security guards come out of nowhere to stop yeah. Cody it was, it was like, what weird, the fuck bro. when did this happen it looked like a cheerleading squad they put they, they're putting them in the ring and then Brock Lesnar is basically like you want some come get some <laughs> so I mean yeah and then Cody yeah. ends up beating all the security guards and Brock Lesnar just walks away, basically. Yeah. I'm thinking they're going to get into it, but they don't really get into it. No. But Which then, takes um, us to our next match of the night, Mr. Bernstein. Seth Rollins taking on The Miz. And, uh, you know, we go back to the ring. Out comes The Miz. Seth Rollins um, obviously gets his pop. Whoa. You know. You were what? there. You were there. Uh, you were there. You know what it was. But uh, Miz, yes, we were. Miz and Rollins, yes, we were. Um, Miz and Rollins bring it into the ring, and Miz attacks Rollins. And pretty much what happens before is before he even gets onto the ramp, uh, yeah, uh, under yeah. the stair. Before he even like climbs the stairs, he starts just beating on him. Like, Holy shit! Okay, there you go, Miz. And then, well, Rollins attacks, and he's like unloading shots. You know, he knocks Miz down to the floor. Um, Rollins hit two, not one but two suicide dives and um, sends Miz to the floor. So when he, when he set it up, Rollins is like obviously fired up. He's posing and Miz sends Rollins into the timekeepers area. 
and but Rollins like jumps back up on top of the barrier and Miz shoves Rollins off and he like lands pretty hard like back and then what happens is they go back to commercial you know these commercials start going in and out but um when they come back from break excuse me the Miz flies off uh off the top Rollins catches him for a pedigree but it's blocked and then we get to a close two count but Rollins comes right back from the drop and Miz hits him with an enzigiri and then obviously you got the fans and they're singing Rollins theme song again um but Rollins goes up top Miz cuts him off they trade shots on the top um and they come to uh this is awesome chant um, and you try to go for the skull crushing finale but Rollins turned it into a suplex then a falcon arrow which I thought was kind of cool and then Rollins follows it up with the curb stomp and he ends up pinning Miz like I said that was one of those one, matches two, where yeah it was one of those matches where like I said earlier, like you saw a poster for like tonight, like if you look at WWE's website, their Instagram, whatever, their Twitter, and like you see the preview and I was like, I think, yeah, bro, I think Seth Rollins is going to win this match. He's not going to lose to The Miz. So, but after the match, you know, Rollins stands tall, Rollins plays the crowd, and then they start cheering him on again. Here. Yeah, and then we have a, I, I think it was one of the funnier segments of the night where Sammy, o, Sammy Kevin Owens, and Matt Riddle are in the back and they're having a, little discussion about what's going on and <laughs> riddle comes up in his usual 420 character and he's just like said bro i have an idea what if i wrap my toe just like solo's tokoa because solo has a small spike i'll have mine it'll be called the toe bro <laughs> he's like what the fuck bro kevin owens is like what are you serious are you serious right now i thought that was funny was, but Matt, Matt Riddle got on a little bit of a serious note and said, "Look, they took out my they took out my boy Randy, and they he just wants his revenge against the bloodline, and I could see why." So yeah. then it takes us to a little video promo with Trish Stratus on how she basically turned on Becky Lynch and Lita. After that video promo, we got a match between A Town Down Austin Theory taking on Bobby Lashley. Yep. And to start the match, Bobby Lashley was mauling this man from the beginning of the match up to that little commercial break. Um, and pretty much how this match ends, Bobby tries to go for the hurt lock after um, after he tries to hit that like drop kick that he normally yeah. hits like through the middle ropes and he jumps up. Uh, he tried that, but uh, Bobby ended up getting the hurt lock, looking like he was about to win. But then they're up in the corner, and then here comes big ass Bronson Reed running at him and hits a body smash on Lashley. The yeah. referee ring, <laughs> the referee rings rings the bell, calls it. He ends. then Bronson Reed ends up taking Bobby Lashley and puts him on like the outside the the outside post, and he just basically splashes on him there. And um, so Bronson Reed ends up throwing Bobby Lashley back in the ring. And Bobby Lash ends up countering. It looked like Bronson Reed was going to go for like a Samoan drop or something like that. Yeah. And then uh, Bobby Lashley ended up getting him in a, in the hurt lock. And before he could really lock it in, Austin Theory fucking hits with Lash in the back of the head with a drop kick, setting up basically Bronson Reed for the big splash. And he hits the tsunami on Bobby Lash. Imagine taking a tsunami from from Bronson Reed. The I mean, big boy. It's the big boy. But that's a, that's a very, very interesting feud, you know? Um, I was thinking like, bro, I mean, obviously Money in the Bank is going to be pretty big. Bronson Reed's obviously like foreign. It's in London, but Bronson Reed is like, what is he, Australian, right? Something like that. Yeah. So you He's can, be, that's going to be really big for them, Money in the Bank. But I was thinking like, who can Austin Theory like feud with? And honestly, one name that comes to mind is like, if you want to build Bray Wyatt again, like, Maybe Austin Theory drops the U.S. title to Bray Wyatt or something like that at SummerSlam, which would be cool. But that's in Detroit. I don't know if Bray. I mean, I'm sure Bray will be back by then. But for Bray to carry that U.S. I'm pretty title, sure they're gonna do. Huh? Uh huh. I just it would you be. You were saying my bad. I could you. That's all. No, no, that's cool. I'm just saying like it would be interesting feud if like Bray Wyatt and Austin Theory feuded. I don't think they've wrestled yet. No, I don't but, think so. I, I don't know who he's gonna drop the title to, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. Um. Then we got Trish Stratus coming out to address the crowd, uh, saying that Becky would be nothing without her. 
Yeah. And that she was the one that took out Lita during that whole incident on why she wasn't there. Um, and she basically says that she's the greatest of all time. And without her, Becky would be nothing. Yeah. And she's not anyone's sidekick. That's why she didn't want to win the tag team titles because she's nobody's sidekick. Yeah. And Trish, it, it's funny seeing the side of Trish because I've I think I've always seen Trish as a baby face in my time watching wrestling, unless I'm mistaken at some point. But yeah, she was always the fan favorite. Yeah, so I mean, I mean she's also a good heel. Remember when she turned heel? Little development there. She was a good heel back in the day too, bro. That's what people don't remember when she was like with Prince Albert and Test. Like I don't know if a lot of fans. Any subscribers, if you oh, guys watch oh, the Attitude right. Era, when that's she brought right. out the cowboy hat, the cowboy hat has significance meaning, bro. That's like, that's vintage Trish Stratus. That's what she started her career with. She used to start with Test and Albert. And um, yeah, man, that was a interesting era, bro. But next, we move on to the tag team championship match. And we got Sonia Deville and Chelsea Green. And they're taking on... Candice LeRae and Mia Yim. This was a very quick match. I'll just say it right now. No, well, hold on, hold on. Not it wasn't a championship match. It wasn't. No, 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 it was no, no. A, I, I think it was a match. number one quick match. shot. I know, but it wasn't for the championship. Just so we know. No, I know. Liv, Liv Morgan and uh, Raquel Rodriguez are the champs. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, LeRae I dropped think it, green. It was um, boring. Like, boring. As well. That's why I'm getting through it. This match is absolutely boring. <laughs> no offense, but you know, <laughs> this match is boring. We're on a time limit here. Just kidding. Um, Candice LeRae, you know, goes up top, gets a drop kick to Green as she tries to make the save, but Yim tangles with Deville, hits the code blue, <clears throat> but Green makes the save by breaking up the pin. Um, LeRae then attacks Green, drops her at ringside. There's a lot of back and forth between Sonya Deville and Yim now. Uh, but Green's com Green comes back in and hits her with an unprettier to Mia Yim in the middle of the ring. And she got the one, two, three. So that's how that match went. And then Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan and Raquel uh, Rodriguez were, they were outside. And uh, what ends up happening, Chelsea Green ends up splashing water on her. And that's pretty much what it is. Which is basically going to end up being Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville versus the tag champs for the belts. Which I really could give not that big of a shit about. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's just like, meh. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. All yeah. right. Then we have the main event. We got the Judgment Day versus Riddle, Owens, and Zayn. Yep. And I think I actually like this match out of all the matches that they had on the card this week. Um. Well this monday anyway um what do you think of this match i mean bro <laughs> um a lot of back and forth you know i, I wasn't really sure who was gonna win but i kind of had a feeling who was gonna win but uh there's a lot of back and forth between like the judgment day like kevin owens was getting his Sami Zayn hit a beautiful what was that what's that move called the uh the blue Bomb. Blue Thunderbomb? What is blue it called? Thunderbomb. Blue, blue Thunderbomb. Thunderbomb. Yeah, I hit a Blue Thunderbomb. Blue. I think it was on Dom. And Dom kicked out of it. But, um, you know, we got... Dom is growing on me. <laughs> that guy you know, is growing on me. You know who got the fucking victory, baby. But it was rudely interrupted so by what, other what, than... Uh, well, let me, let me get to how this finishes first. So right. the way it finishes... Um, Riddle ends up picking up the victory. He ends up getting the, the floating bro after Kevin Owens hits the stunner and uh, Sami Zayn hits the Haluva kick on Balor. I was thinking it was going to be on Dom, but they got it on Balor. And they pick up the one, two, three. Um, then after that, since the Judgment Day couldn't get the job done, the Bloodline ended up coming in and started attacking uh, Riddle, Zayn, and Owens. And then uh, they're just all brawling in the ring at this point. And then here comes the LWO to come in too. And now we just have all the teams just scrambling out. Raw basically ends with Owens. Oh, wait, it ends with Ray hitting the 619 on Dom and Kevin Owens dropping Damian Priest on the announce table. It doesn't break. I thought it was going to break, but I thought it was he ends up break. dropping Damian and Damian yeah, Priest. Yeah, it didn't, though. I don't know what I you thought it was going to break. Bro. 
I thought he was gonna hit a pop power bomb, but that didn't end up happening. But what I rate this show, uh, I'll give it like a three at most, just in the middle. I'm I'll neither. Like I don't half, think it was horrible, but I don't think it was. I mean, I you can expect. Great, I, I would I don't like. Think it was like I hope with the draft, bro. Raw, we get more like four and five star rating Raws, but it's just like they don't really know what to do. I think with Vince coming back, it's very difficult. You know. I know Triple H is still in charge of creative, so that's what they said. I mean, you can see the difference from like the Raw and SmackDown after Mania because yeah. those were creatively pitched by Vince, and there's like some last minute like changes, script changes, yeah. and and there's no matches. It was all drama. It's like, bro, it it's like there's no wrestling. It's all yeah. entertainment, and I'm not even entertained. I fell that's asleep, <laughs> like. So let, hopefully let's next week, hopefully next week is better, you know, but um, again, that's all we got for you guys tonight. If you guys enjoy our content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe below. We're going to be doing some things on the gaming channel very soon. So stay tuned for that. But we'll see you guys Wednesday. And don't forget, we got Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. So we'll be doing a video about that as well. But stay subscribed. Stay, keep your notifications on. This is Joseph. This is Nathan. And guys, we'll see you next time on the Blown Coverage.